All right. Welcome, everyone. Sunday, May 28th, and we are going to dive into Gene Key 16. And, and I'm going to use this as a springboard, a little bit of a springboard to talk about how we can look at our own gene keys and our own human design from the way of a 6-2, right? So I'm a profile line 6-2. So the teacher, the mentor, the role model, I'm, and I'm over 50. So that puts me square in the giving of my gifts of the six line. And then the two line, the dancer, playing with this information. And you know, when, when Ra channeled human design, the way it came through Ra was fixed a fixed sense of who you are and who you are not. And that can be helpful because sometimes we need bright, bright lines. We need roadmaps. We need like, go here, don't go here. But bright lines always sacrifice a level of truth, right? Because the truth is never black or white. So they're just efficient. And then Richard Rudd being a student of Ra is on the entire other end of the spectrum. And that's the other end of that spectrum is contemplation. And contemplation, I mean, you'll even see, I, I've, I've pinged them a few times asking some questions as I dig further in. Sometimes I like to go down rabbit holes with the gene keys. And as I dig in and they're, and they always say, and they say this in the website and Richard Brad says it's in videos and their team is trained to say this which is we always want you to contemplate. Go back and follow your heart. Listen to your heart. It doesn't matter what we say. It more matters what you resonate with. And I, I think that I've, as I age <laughs> and as I get more and more experience, I resonate more and more with that notion that I can trust myself. And sometimes this comes after really taking on the structure and then you can trust yourself. We've talked about this before inside of a couple distinctions in the gene keys and mastery, the city of where we're going. The shadow here in 16 is indifference. The gift is versatility. And what I love is the city of mastery. And I want to talk about mastery today. And oftentimes people who are in their mastery have taken the time to study the black and white, you know, the it's this and it's not this. They studied the structure. They studied the banks of the river, the map. And then at some point in their career, it got embodied. And so the truth of the revelation of those maps became internal. They're in their bones. And so that means that they can disregard the map. And that allows them the freedom to innovate, the freedom to see things in a new way that actually elevates the conversation. Not that creates a lot of mistakes, but instead elevates the conversation, elevates the original revelation to a higher level. And that's mastery. And mostly I know this in the space of the, the doctors that I've worked with, the health pr practitioners, because that's one of my areas that I have really good karma. I always find like ninja experts. And the ones who have put in their, let's use the, the rubric of Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours, which is really five years full time. And other esoteric teachings will say seven years. So five to seven years to get into that mastery. And these people that I've talked to, these experts oftentimes have been doing things for like 30 years. And I remember walking into the room once with one of them. It was like a book that I was obsessed with. And then I went to a conference with this man, his name is Eric Braverman. And he was kind of on the forefront of bioidentical hormones back in the day. That's when I got curious about it. And he had 
also written a book about brain chemistry. So that was just what I was interested in. So I started following him. And when he took one look at me, he was like, your issue is your bones. And I, you know, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> but it turned out he was correct that bone density was my issue and continues to be the thing that I work with in that when working with practitioners. So that he's like, and he had told me what he had told me to get an MRI. He's like, you've got something and you need to get an MRI. And he goes, and I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing wrong with you, but and that's because I've done this for 30 years and I know there's nothing wrong with you, but you still need to get an MRI. So I did, and there was nothing wrong with me. But that's the kind of mastery that we get to step into when we have claimed the structures of things, because clearly medicine and the understanding of the physiology has a structure to it. But the geniuses get to play outside the structure. And those are the people who win the Nobel prizes in medicine, and physics, and all the things. And one of the examples inside the gene keys of versatility and mastery is Leonardo da Vinci. He was a polymath, one of those people who is good at everything, but that's because he thought spherically, not linearly. And that is also the province of genius. And, and it's, it's available to all of us. We just have to unhook from linearity. When I get stuck in linearity the most is when I'm the most insecure, right? Because I'm just going by, okay, this is supposed to happen, then this, and then this, and then this. And that's supposed to give me some sense of safety. I know someone who is really trying hard to find a cure for cancer. And I really admire that moonshot, right? Like she's playing in a moonshot. The issue that I see with respect to her moonshot is that she's coming at it from the mind. And the mind, as we know in the esoteric traditions that the jinkies are based on, that that mysticism that I teach and allow to run through me, that, that mind can only get you to the temple door. And then you've got to like, as Kierkegaard says, you got to get off and you've got to walk through the door. It's faith. And what is faith? Faith is the imaginal realm. So those of you who are in the super abundance course, I have been going so deep inside of the imaginal realm that I actually have a part two <laughs> that's germinating inside of me as I, as I understand. And here's the, here's the cool part of it. When I started teaching super abundance, it actually came through as an experience that I had from my time in Tulum, prior to Tulum and in Tulum of being activated inside my light body. I don't mean inside, my activating my light body, my awareness of my light body. And you know, if you remember, my, my life work gene key is gene key 11. And what is the city of 11? Light. So you can't make this up. This is, I mean, you can make this up. <laughs> It is made up, but it's like perfect. And that's why I love it. When you find your life work, you found some codes, some clues to a soul path that wants to materialize and actualize itself in 3D, in the manifest plane. So I think it opened up a door teaching the superabundance. You know, it's one of those the, the thing of superabundance is being inside the field of, of serendipity. And so the serendipity comes through and, and finding teachers that have access points. And actually what I'm finding is this teacher that I found has um, a map. And she did a lot of the heavy lifting because she read some of the early esoteric teachings of Gurdjieff. And I'm not sure I want to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, that's my two line speaking. If you are a one three, you'll be like, oh, I'm on that. I'm on it. I'm going to do it. 
So yeah, one threes, definitely do it. And then come, come tell me what it is you learned. And then I will synthesize it inside my body and, and we'll make a great team, <laughs> right? Because really we're weaving the fabric of something. There is not, we're, we've let go of that Piscean era that like knowledge is contained in this one person. And in fact, the whole time when I'm listening to this woman's download, um, her name is Cynthia Bourgeau, and I'm listening her, to her download. I, I'm so aware that it's a context. I'm so aware that, that it's the eye of contemplation that gets me there because I will never be able to prove what she's saying. You and I will never be able to prove in linear fashion in the world of the eye of, of reason or the eye of the flesh, we will not be able to prove it. And so as mystics, and I'm going to conclude all of you as mystics. Yeah. I mean, right. We're, we're heaven on earth. We're here to have intact as well and restore the eye of contemplation, the eye of seeing with a new eye. And that's exciting. And, I, and what I love too about her mastery, so this woman who wrote this is lifelong devotee of the teachings of Gurdjieff and others, but that's one spiritual teacher who had a very incredible body of work mapping the metaphysical realm. Also the father of the Enneagram. So very practical work to see the not self, to see who the personality self, which is that personality self is important to identify because it's at a lower level of vibration. And so she spent her 70 years on the planet or more, I mean, probably not since birth, but whenever this material became alive, becoming a master teacher and a master transmitter. And, and the map includes even the precarious places in the terrain where we spiritual people can go off the grid and get into magical thinking and start, and start, um, living in a way that doesn't have integrity with even the map of, of the, of the world of the non-ordinary. So I thought that is a huge contribution and something that I'm interested in diving into. So you're, you all will get the benefit of whatever it is that comes through here, because I'm interested in understanding the terrain of the non-ordinary so that we can live powerfully here. And, mm -hmm. and the teachers that I'm listening to have that in mind. Nobody is saying so that we can get out of here, so that we can escape, but it's really so that we can be the bodhisattva presence, so that we can be the compassion presence, the love presence, that we can bring a vibration here that actually holds in check the lower vibrations. And I, I never really thought about this until Wayne Dyer mentioned it and he didn't say where it came from, but Gurdjieff actually held this view. And I think it was from some Sufi mysticism that there are a number of people here in their bodies and beyond. And I'm gonna say individuals because I, I actually don't know that they're all human. They could, because I, I actually believe that animals can hold this frequency. So let's just say there's individuals and, and some numbers have been 25, but there's also, I've heard lots of different numbers, but let's just play with 25, that there's a council of 25 souls here on earth and beyond that are holding down the frequency of our biosphere, of our earth plane, so that full on evil doesn't take over. And I thought, I found like, I found that there was order in the cosmos in that way, 
that there's a balancing order in the cosmos. And as we, and you can take it or leave it because honestly, it's just a context. And every context for me is, does it give me power? Does it help me to show up here until I get a revelation of, of knowing? of something that you just know. And that's from the liminal world. That's from the world of the non-ordinary where you just know. So let's get pop a, pop a little bit into Gene Key 16. I mean, really that is Gene Key 16. This is called magical genius, okay? <laughs> so if you have Gene Key 16, welcome to your magical genius. And we all have Gene Key 16, right? We have all the codes inside of us. And so if we want to activate, this is in the ring of prosperity, we get to activate our magical genius. And Gene Key 16 shows us how to do that. So first we overcome our indifference. To me, that's the shadow band. That's the lower frequencies of fear. And fear comes in many flavors, fear of rejection, fear of not being good enough, shame, all the ways that the ego either turns itself, you know, the ego does two things. It, it's because it's very, div it's dividing. The nature of the ego is duality. So it will either project out or, pro I don't even say either or, it does both, right? It judges and then it attacks you. So at the lower shadow band, it's indifference. It's when we've numbed so far out that we become indifferent to our calling. And we, or we say things like, I'm not really ready yet, right? That's a, that's a, that's a potent one for those of us on a spiritual path, because we have been, in, we've indoctrinated ourselves in a level of perfectionism. As we watch other people do things, we project onto them perfectionism, which is idealization, meaning we put people up on a pedestal, which then does a couple of things. Number one, it allows, it gets us off the hook, right? Well, I'm not as good as they are. So I don't have to do what I'm here to do. And then we can make up an excuse. I'm not ready yet, but also it separates us. The other thing it does, number two, is separate us from feeling the oneness that's already there. And so one way we can look at it, and this comes from the world of Jung, is through the golden shadow. So if you are projecting onto someone that they've got it all together, and maybe they do in certain areas, I mean, awesome. But that seeing that you can see it means that you've got it inside you. Remember that phrase from AA, if you spot it, you got it. <laughs> We can use that for good. If you spot it, you got it. If you spot someone else's genius, you also have that genius, but not in the same way as that template, right? Because we're each different body minds. We have unique experiences that got us to this place. And so the genius wants to run through your uniqueness. And that's a big leap of faith, especially for women waking up from the patriarchy. Because we've been told through implicit and explicit messages that what we have isn't good enough. But now we have created a new context in, inside the Evolving Sisters Network, inside of a feminine spirituality inside of personal growth work, we've created a new context. And that is called that the feminine has me medicine. And I was going to say a message and medicine for this very time. You have medicine for this very time. And so the first step is to believe that. And if you're looking for evidence out there of whether it's true, you've lost your way. Because the remember, remember last week's teaching, as inside, 
outside as outside inside. You are in a hologram. So when you choose that your medicine is valuable, when you choose that your message is needed, then you will find indicators on the outside mirroring that back to you. And we don't have to overstate this. Medicine is simple. Medicine is presence. And this is really what Gene Key 16, I mean, we went from Gene Key 20 last week talking about presence and here we are in 16. We're not leaving presence. Because Gene Key 16, while it's, it's the gate of skill, the skill in, in linear mental thinking only gets you so far. You can't cure cancer by studying chemistry. You might be able to cure one person's cancer, but you can't cure cancer writ large because cancer writ large came from, I mean, if you wanna cure cancer, become an environmentalist, right? The toxins in our world are, are causing systemic breakdowns in our body. One manifestation is called cancer. The other manifestation could be called Alzheimer's. But the breakdown in our bodies is from the way we have treated earth. And so there's no linearity that's gonna get, there's no technological linearity that's gonna get you there. Inside of our, um, in our, inside of our leadership group one day, Allison Conti was sharing that she had a client who actually was a genius and he had come up with technological solutions to many of the world's problems, but none of them like worked. Like on paper they worked, but not in reality because the world is spherical, it's dynamic. It's not made of just of what we can see. There are other forces that are shaping it. And when you are a magical genius in gate 16, you open yourself up because you think spherically. You now think relationally and you're present for the drop-in of information that can come through you. So what's cool about 16 is that in the city of mastery, Richard Rudd was talking about Rachmaninoff and one of the pieces that is really hard to play and how if you were in the city of 16, you could sit down at a piano and play it without being a pianist, <laughs> right? Now that's magical. That's highly magical. Versatility tells us that we practice. And I, and I love that too, because that's really, we don't, we can't spiritually bypass. Often times the road to the city is the road of your 10,000 hours, your road of practice, your, your road of meeting yourself over and over and, and getting your butt on the piano bench and playing and playing and playing like, like the tiger moms, you know, <laughs> that was a whole thing that in Chinese culture, they were saying like, it's the tiger mom where she's like, you know, you made a mistake, play it again. And the kid is like one o'clock in the morning and the kid's like exhausted, play it again. That's, that's the road to a level of mastery. That's the road to like my doctor being able to say, nothing's wrong, but, here, but you need to walk the paces. That's the road of that. And then when we occupy that space, there's also something magical that happens that really breaks with time. And that's the cool thing about the world of the non-ordinary is that there is no time. Time does not live there. Things can happen in an instant. And what happens in an instant is the transmission of Rachmaninoff. And, and, and to me, those are things that we can't 
we don't seek after. We can't, we're, we're not into our craving. We're not into our getting anything for something. The holy instant. I love that. Exactly. Exactly. And, the, and that's from the Course of Miracles. And the thing about the world of the non-ordinary is that it is not here to fulfill your personal desires. It's transpersonal. It's beyond the ego. That's why Gurdjieff spent the time to help us understand the Enneagram so that we could understand our personality structure. And, and really, how, is, how was the mechanism? How was the machine? He called it a machine. How were we programmed? And so understanding our conditioning is really important. It, it doesn't mean you need to lose power over it. Whenever I used to read the Enneagram, I always felt like I got kicked in the stomach when I read my number. I was like, oh, that's like the worst number. And it's like, oh, that's how you know that's your number because you think it's the worst number. <laughs> I'd rather be that. Yeah, well, then, that, then you're not it. <laughs> when it makes you sick, that's your number. But really, at, at, over time, when we make friends with it, it doesn't have to make us sick. It, it doesn't make me sick anymore. It, it makes me smile at how sophisticated the mechanism is. Like, damn, you are good at every, every way I seek to get out. That's also it. <laughs> and so there's no running from it. There's just a surrender because the world of the non-ordinary is not a contrary to our, to even our spiritual materialism as Trumpa Rinpoche would call it. The world of the not ordinary is not here for your personal anything, personal gain, personal fame, personal wisdom, personal anything, personal money. It's not here for that. It's its own reward. And non-attachment is the currency inside of that. And so I practice, I'm practicing this all myself because I'm seeing as I do this deeper dive, I see the ways that I'm really being taught. And so I'm going to end on this, this note. And this is really a, a post eclipse note, you know, the, the eclipse season that we went through in March and April, and then the, the grand cross in May. And we're still, we're still in that frequency basically till the full moon in June. And there's a lot of breakdown and I'm witnessing it in myself. I'm witnessing it in others. I'm seeing the overwhelm. Anybody can relate to the overwhelm that's happening right now on, on just many levels, either whether it's inside you and you're, you're feeling it or you're feeling other people feeling it or you're seeing the vestiges of the overwhelm. And as a result, what happens is people get, they, we, they try to manage it. And so they're managing it with addictive patterns. And that's overeating or undereating, you know, exercising. And none of that, that's eating is not bad. Exercising is not bad. It's just the way that we're using it to manage drinking alcohol, um, shopping, spending money, just ways that we're trying to kind of plug the holes. And as I got present to that and I witnessed it, I saw that there's no way to plug the holes. They're always going to come out. It's, the, it's just going to come out somewhere and it's going to come out sideways. And, and the thing about that kind of repression and suppression <clears throat> is that it, it will come out, it will tap you on the shoulder and then it will hit you on the head with a two by four and some serious wake up calls will occur. And that's what's happening to humanity right now. So I'm speaking to you as, as a person who gets to step into your mastery, a person who can be a salve for 
the world that's going through a massive transition right now. And so if you're personally going through a, a shift and a change, a breakdown, I, I invite you to recontextualize it. See it through new eyes. Hold the question, how can I see this through new eyes? How can this, how is this actually for me? I got some huge insights and I saw myself in different ways when I asked that question and I was able to pivot just a, like a micro like adjustment of a perspective. And I was like, ah, okay, it's happening because this needs to happen or this, need, this needs to get an alignment. This, I prayed for this. A friend of mine said the other day, that she prayed, she pray, it's like a prayer for, I forgot what it was she prayed, but it's similar to a prayer of, you know, remove anything that's in the way of love. <laughs> you know, like, have you ever prayed that? And, and then all this shit starts happening in your life, <laughs> right? Like you called it in, you asked for it. So, cause the universe is honorable. It's honoring that deeper call because it's not really interested in the world of the ego. So I'm going to end with like a tie if, with if Gene Key 16. And that's just to say that you stepping into your mastery is allowing the healing bomb to come through to the world. The, we are the agents of that. And when we, as esoteric traditions teach us, when we go into the, the eye of the heart, I'm going to call it that, when we go into the heart, and we, we worked with that last week, and this week we're going to work on our call with, with mastery. When we go into the eye of the heart, that gives us new fuel and new courage to actually do the thing that may scare the shit out of us. And, and as I said, to tie back Gene Key 20 and presence, it doesn't have to be a big deal. It doesn't have to be that you, that you have 10,000 followers or um, like a totally like, killer TikTok account, you know, or whatever, whatever rubric you might be using that I can't do my mastery unless I have this thing. No, you can do your mastery right here, right now in presence because mastery is presence. So if we go back to that person who wants to cure cancer, the answers are going to be in presence. And I'm going to say that the answer is going to be not only in presence, but with another. It's going to be in the field with someone else. And that's an interesting take. And I think that's very Aquarian. And that was coming through the teachings in this esoteric model. And I had never heard them. And I think they actually are the underpinnings of the gene keys. I think I found the deeper well underneath the gene keys. And what, what this teaching shows us is that when we go into the heart and are present with another, we open ourselves to information that is not available on this linear plane. And that's how you start to work with your mastery. So inside of our call, we're going to end here and we're going to go inside of our call. Um, and we're going to start working a little bit with our mastery to understand more of, of what is the unique medicine that we're here to bring. So I also want to presence the poem about women in medicine. Alexis said, in my dream, women flew. 
Birds I have never seen. They flew high, they flew together over trees and dry, dusty land. They came back, some after years, with water careful in their beaks for those who had forgotten how to fly. Manju Kapoor. Exactly. Mm. And Katie says, a kind of genius in our unawakened immaturity, which then gets to choose to wake up and grow in a spiritual sense as we age, live life, and let life break us open. Yeah, well said. Well said, sister. Very well said. All right, thank you for being here. And let, it, let us just end with rubbing our hands together gathering all this positive energy that we have generated and we just beam it out to all those who are suffering, overwhelmed, doubting their calling, doubting their purpose, doubting why they're here, tempted to go deeper into their shadow. We throw them an energetic lifeline right here we dedicate this energy that we have created and sourced. May all beings benefit from the merits of our efforts. Amen. Namaste.